My golden child brother stole app ideas and I helped sue him. Now he's in jail, my parents disowned me. I never thought I'd be in this situation, but here I am. I'm Lily, 24F, and I've always been the good sister to my older brother, Brian, 28M. Growing up in a small town in Ohio, Brian was the golden child, smart, charismatic, and seemingly perfect in every way. Our parents, especially our dad, doted on him constantly. Dad, a former high school football star turned successful car dealership owner, saw Brian as the son who would carry on his legacy. Mom, a part-time nurse and full-time homemaker, always made sure Brian had everything he needed to succeed. Meanwhile, I was often overlooked, but I didn't mind too much. I focused on my studies and tried to carve out my own path. I was the quiet one, more interested in books and computers than sports and parties. While Brian was out winning football games and collecting trophies, I was in my room, teaching myself to code and dreaming of Silicon Valley. Brian breezed through high school, excelling in everything he touched. He was the star quarterback, the valedictorian, and the most popular guy on campus. I'll admit, I was a bit jealous, but I also admired him. He had a way of making everyone feel special, including me. I remember the time he stayed up all night helping me with my science fair project when I was in 8th grade. That's the brother I thought I knew. Things started to change when Brian went off to college. He got into an Ivy League school on a sports scholarship, while I stayed in state to save money. At first, we kept in touch regularly. He'd call me late at night, telling me about his classes, his teammates, and the girls he was dating. But as time went on, the calls became less frequent, and when we did talk, Brian seemed different. There was an edge to him that I'd never noticed before. It wasn't until I started college myself that I began to see the full picture. I was a freshman at Ohio State and Brian was in his final year at his school. One night, I overheard some girls in my dorm talking about a guy named Brian from an Ivy League school who had led them on, promising relationships only to ghost them completely once he got what he wanted. My stomach churned as I realized they were talking about my brother. At first, I dismissed it as gossip. Brian had always been a bit of a player, but I couldn't believe he'd be so callous. But then I started paying more attention. When Brian came home for breaks, I noticed how he'd charm our old high school classmates, making grand promises about helping them with their careers or introducing them to his college contacts. But as soon as he left town, he'd forget all about them. Over the next few years, as I worked my way through college and Brian entered the business world, I noticed his pattern of using people, not just romantically, but in his professional life too. He'd befriend people, extract useful information or favors from them, and then discard them without a second thought. It was like watching a master manipulator at work and it made me sick. I confronted Brian about it once, during a family dinner at our favorite local restaurant. It was Thanksgiving break during my junior year and Brian had just landed his first job at a prestigious tech firm in New York. He was regaling us with stories of his success, when he mentioned how he'd outmaneuvered a colleague to get a promotion. Brian, I said, trying to keep my voice steady, don't you think that's a bit unethical? He laughed it off, saying, come on, Lil. It's just how the world works. You've got to use every advantage you can get. Our parents, as usual, took his side. Mom said I was being dramatic and Dad told me to stop being jealous of my successful brother. Your brother knows how to play the game, Dad said, clapping Brian on the back. You could learn a thing or two from him. That night, as I lay in my childhood bed, I couldn't shake the feeling that the brother I'd looked up to for so long was becoming someone I didn't recognize. But I tried to push those thoughts aside. After all, he was family, and family sticks together, right? After graduation, I landed a job at a small marketing firm in Columbus. It wasn't glamorous, but I was proud of making it on my own merit. Brian, meanwhile, was climbing the corporate ladder in New York at breakneck speed. Every time he came home, he had a new designer watch or a story about some exclusive club he'd been to. Things came to a head last year when Brian announced he was starting his own tech company. He moved back to Ohio, setting up his headquarters in Cleveland. He was riding high on his success, and his behavior became even more arrogant and callous. He'd brag about how he convinced investors to pour money into his startup, even though he knew the product wasn't ready. It's all about the hype, he'd say with a smirk. I tried to distance myself from Brian's antics, but it wasn't easy. People in our industry would often approach me, either singing Brian's praises or complaining about how he'd screwed them over. I felt caught in the middle, torn between family loyalty and my own sense of right and wrong. The final straw came three months ago. Brian's company was hosting a big launch party for their new app, a social media platform that promised to revolutionize the way people connect online. The party was held at a swanky hotel in downtown Cleveland, and it seemed like everyone who was anyone in the Midwest tech scene was there. I attended, more out of obligation than excitement. 
As I mingled with the crowd, sipping on overpriced champagne and making small talk, I overheard a conversation that made my blood run cold. Two developers, young guys probably fresh out of college, were talking in hushed tones near the bar. They were saying how Brian had stolen their idea for the app. Apparently, they had approached him months ago with a prototype, hoping to collaborate. Brian had dismissed their idea publicly, only to turn around and develop an almost identical app with his own team. I couldn't believe it. This wasn't just Brian being his usual manipulative self, this was outright theft. I watched him work the room, shaking hands and laughing, acting like he hadn't just built his success on someone else's hard work. I confronted him that night, after most of the guests had left. Brian was drunk and loose-lipped, his tie askew and his hair must from running his hands through too many times. Brian, I said, my voice shaking, I need to talk to you about something I overheard. He grinned at me, slinging an arm around my shoulders. What's up, baby sis? Enjoying the party? I shrugged off his arm and told him what I heard. To my horror, he didn't even try to deny it. So what? He slurred. Those guys were nobodies. I've got the connections, the money, the team. I made their little idea into something big. That's business, baby sis. I was disgusted. I told Brian he needed to come clean, to give credit where it was due. He laughed in my face and told me to mind my own business. When I threatened to expose him, he got angry. His eyes, usually so charming, turned cold. You wouldn't dare, he sneered. After everything I've done for you? Remember who got you that internship in college? Who introduced you to your boss? Your precious little career exists because of me, Lily. Don't bite the hand that feeds you. I stood there, shocked into silence. Was this really my brother? The same guy who'd helped me with my science projects, who taught me to ride a bike, who'd threatened to beat up my first boyfriend if he ever hurt me. That night, as I drove home, I couldn't stop thinking about all the people Brian had stepped on to get where he was. The classmates he'd used and discarded. The colleagues he'd betrayed. And now, these young developers whose dreams he'd stolen. I barely slept that night. By morning, I'd made my decision. I reached out to those developers. I told them everything I knew and offered to help them take legal action against Brian. They were hesitant at first, scared of going up against a rising star in the tech world. But with my encouragement and the promise of my testimony, they agreed. Now, a legal storm is brewing. Brian's company is under investigation, and the tech world is buzzing with rumors. My parents are furious with me, saying I've betrayed the family. Mom called me in tears, asking how I could do this to my own brother. Dad hasn't spoken to me since he found out. Brian hasn't spoken to me since he received the legal notice, but I know he's seething. I've heard from mutual friends that he's been raging about me, calling me a jealous, ungrateful bitch who's trying to ruin him. Part of me feels guilty for potentially destroying my brother's career and our family's peace. Every time I think about Thanksgiving dinners or Christmas mornings, my heart aches for what we've lost. But a larger part feels relieved, like I've finally done the right thing after years of watching Brian take advantage of others. Am I wrong for exposing my brother's unethical business practices? Should I have kept quiet for the sake of family harmony? I'm struggling with the fallout, but I can't shake the feeling that this was long overdue. The brother I loved is long gone, replaced by someone I barely recognize. And as much as it hurts, I know I can't stand by and watch him hurt more people. I don't know what the future holds, but for the first time in a long time, I feel like I'm standing on the right side of things. It's a lonely place to be, but at least I can look at myself in the mirror again. Update 1, it's been two months since my last post, and a lot has happened. The legal proceedings against Brian have kicked into high gear, and the consequences are starting to unfold in ways I never anticipated. First, the good news, the two developers, Tom, 31M, and Alex, 29M, have gained significant support in the tech community. After I helped them share their story, several other small-time developers came forward with similar experiences of Brian stealing their ideas. It's created a sort of movement in the industry, with people calling for more protection for independent creators. Tom and Alex turned out to be incredibly bright and determined guys. They've been working tirelessly with their lawyers, piecing together a timeline of Brian's unethical practices. It's been eye-opening to see just how far back his manipulations go. There are stories from his college days, his first job, all the way up to the present. It's like looking at a map of destruction, with Brian at the center of it all. Brian's company has taken a massive hit. Several major investors have pulled out, and their stock price has plummeted. The app has been removed from app stores pending the investigation, and most of Brian's employees have jumped ship. I've heard through the grapevine that he's struggling to pay his legal fees, and the fancy car he loved to show off has disappeared from his driveway. As for Brian himself, he's not handling it well. 
He showed up at my apartment last week, completely drunk. It was late, around 2 a.m., and I was startled awake by loud banging on my door. When I opened it, there was Brian, his usually perfectly coiffed hair a mess, his expensive shirt stained and rumpled. He alternated between begging me to retract my statement and threatening to ruin my life. I made you, he slurred, his breath reeking of whiskey. I can break you just as easily. Then, in the next breath, he was on his knees, tears in his eyes, asking me how I could do this to my own brother. It was a pitiful sight, and despite everything, my heart ached for him. I recorded the entire interaction, just in case. As I helped him into an Uber, I couldn't help but wonder how we'd ended up here. Our parents are still furious with me. Mom called yesterday, saying I've destroyed the family. Her voice was hoarse, and I could tell she'd been crying. She told me that dad's health is declining due to the stress, and it's all my fault. Apparently, he's been having chest pains and the doctor mentioned the possibility of heart problems. I feel terrible about dad, but I can't help but think they're trying to manipulate me emotionally. It's a tactic I've seen Brian use too many times to count. The hardest part has been the isolation. Most of our extended family has sided with Brian, believing his lies about me being jealous and vindictive. Last week was our cousin Emma's wedding, and I wasn't invited. I saw the photos on Facebook, everyone smiling, Brian in the middle of it all, playing the part of the charming, successful cousin. It hurt more than I expected. I've lost friends too, people who benefited from Brian's network and now blame me for its collapse. My best friend since high school, Sarah, hasn't returned my calls in weeks. Last I heard, she was interning at one of Brian's friends' companies. I guess loyalty has a price, and I'm the one paying it. But it's not all bad. I've received messages of support from strangers who've read about the case online. Several of Brian's ex-girlfriends have reached out, thanking me for finally exposing him. One of them, a woman named Rachel, shared a particularly harrowing story about how Brian had manipulated and gaslighted her throughout their relationship. It doesn't make up for the loss of family, but it does reaffirm that I made the right choice. Tom and Alex have been incredibly supportive. We meet regularly to discuss the case, and they've become good friends. They've even offered me a position in their new company once this is all over, which is a silver lining in this whole mess. It's nice to be around people who value integrity and hard work, rather than just results at any cost. The legal team is confident about our case. Apparently, there's a paper trail a mile long of Brian's unethical practices. They've uncovered evidence of not just idea theft, but also financial fraud and employee mistreatment. It's like opening Pandora's box, every day seems to bring a new revelation about the extent of Brian's misdeeds. I'm trying to stay strong, but some days are harder than others. I miss the brother I thought I had, the family dinners that didn't end in arguments. I miss the simplicity of believing that Brian was the perfect older brother, the golden child who could do no wrong. But then I remember all the people Brian hurt, all the lives he disrupted with his selfishness, and I know I can't back down now. The preliminary hearing is next week. Brian's lawyers have already tried to paint me as a disgruntled, jealous sister out for revenge. They've dug up old social media posts where I praised Brian's success, trying to use them to prove that I'm lying now. But I'm ready to tell my truth, no matter how hard they try to discredit me. This whole experience has made me realize how much I've grown. The old Lily might have backed down, might have let Brian smooth talk his way out of this. But not anymore. I'm standing firm, ready to face whatever comes next. It's not easy, and there are moments when I doubt myself, but I know in my heart that this is the right thing to do. As I prepare for the hearing, I can't help but think about the future. Will there ever be a way back for our family? Can Brian ever change, or is this who he's always been? And what about me? Where do I go from here, once all this is over? These questions keep me up at night, but for now, I'm focusing on one day at a time. The truth will come out, and whatever happens after that, I'll face it knowing I stood up for what's right. Update 2, it's been another three months, and the situation has taken some unexpected turns. The legal proceedings are still ongoing, but there have been significant developments both in the case and in my personal life. First, the case, the preliminary hearing went better than expected. The judge seemed skeptical of Brian's defense, especially when presented with the mountain of evidence we've gathered. Brian sat there, stone-faced, as witness after witness testified about his unethical practices. It was hard to watch, but I knew it was necessary. However, just as things were looking up, a new complication arose. A woman named Sarah, 26F, came forward, claiming to be Brian's ex-girlfriend. She says she has proof that Brian not only stole the app idea but also embezzled company funds to support a lavish lifestyle. Her testimony could be the nail in Brian's coffin, but there's a catch, she wants a cut of any settlement in exchange for her cooperation. I'm conflicted about this. 
On one hand, Sarah's evidence could ensure Brian faces consequences for his actions. On the other hand, it feels wrong to essentially pay for testimony. Tom, Alex, and I have had long discussions about the ethical implications of this. We want justice, but we don't want to stoop to Brian's level of manipulation. Speaking of Tom and Alex, working closely with them has led to an unexpected development. Tom and I have grown closer, and we've started dating. It wasn't planned, and I was hesitant at first given the circumstances, but he's been an incredible support through all of this. Alex has been supportive too, though I worry about how this might affect our group dynamic. As for my family, things have gotten worse. Dad had a minor heart attack last month, which mom blames entirely on me. I tried to visit him in the hospital, but mom wouldn't let me in. Brian used this as an opportunity to play the concerned son, barely leaving dad's side at the hospital. It's frustrating to see him manipulate the situation, but I can't deny that part of me is worried about dad too. I've been sending get well cards and leaving voicemails, but I haven't heard back from either of them. The stress has taken its toll on me as well. I've been having trouble sleeping, plagued by nightmares about courtrooms and family arguments. My work performance has suffered. I've missed deadlines and zoned out during important meetings. My boss, Lisa, called me into her office last week to discuss it. She's been understanding so far, but I worry about the long-term impact on my career. There have been some bright spots, though. A group of women in tech have started a mentorship program inspired by my story, aimed at protecting and promoting women in the industry. They've asked me to be a speaker at their launch event, which is both terrifying and exciting. I've never thought of myself as a public speaker, but maybe this is a chance to turn this whole mess into something positive. Brian, meanwhile, seems to be unraveling. He's been spotted at bars around town, getting into arguments with anyone who'll listen. Last week, he drunkenly crashed his car into a tree. He wasn't hurt, but it's clear he's spiraling. Part of me wants to reach out, to try and help him, but I know I can't. Not now, not after everything. As the legal proceedings drag on, I find myself wondering if there will ever be a real resolution. Will Brian ever truly face consequences for his actions? Will our family ever heal from this rift? And am I strong enough to see this through to the end? Despite the challenges, I'm trying to stay focused on the bigger picture. This isn't just about Brian anymore, it's about standing up for what's right, even when it's difficult. It's about creating a fairer, more ethical tech industry. And it's about becoming the kind of person I can be proud of, regardless of what my family thinks. The next phase of the trial starts soon, and with Sarah's potential testimony, it promises to be even more intense than before. I'm nervous, but I'm ready. Whatever happens, I know I've done the right thing. Update 3, it's been 6 months since my last update, and I can hardly believe how much has changed. The case against Brian has finally concluded, and the aftermath has been nothing short of earth-shattering for our family and the tech industry at large. With Sarah's testimony and the mountain of evidence we presented, Brian was found guilty on multiple counts of fraud, theft of intellectual property, and embezzlement. He's been sentenced to five years in prison and ordered to pay substantial damages to Tom and Alex, as well as several other developers he'd wronged over the years. The day of the sentencing was surreal. I sat in the courtroom, watching as the judge delivered the verdict. Brian stood there, his usual confidence gone, replaced by a look of disbelief and fear. As they led him away, he looked back at me. For a moment, I saw a flicker of the brother I used to know, vulnerable, scared. It broke my heart, but I knew this was necessary. The verdict sent shockwaves through the tech world. Brian's fall from grace has become a cautionary tale, sparking discussions about ethics in the industry. Several companies have implemented new policies to protect independent developers and foster a more collaborative environment. As for my family, the fallout has been severe. Mom and dad finally had to face the truth about Brian, and it's been a painful process for them. Dad's health has improved, thankfully, but their world has been turned upside down. They're in therapy now, trying to come to terms with everything. Our relationship is still strained, but there's been some progress. They've started to acknowledge that I did the right thing, even if it was difficult for them to accept at first. Last week, I had dinner with them for the first time in months. It was awkward and tense, but it was a start. Mom cried when she hugged me goodbye, whispering, I'm sorry we didn't believe you. It's not perfect, but it's something. Brian, surprisingly, reached out to me the day before he was due to report to prison. We met at a small diner on the outskirts of town. It was a difficult conversation. He apologized for his actions, both towards me and everyone else he'd hurt. I'm not sure if it was genuine remorse or just fear of what he was about to face, but it was the first time I'd seen a glimmer of the brother I used to know. I messed up, Lily, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. I don't know how to fix this. I told him I hoped he'd use this time to reflect and become a better person. 
Only time will tell if he takes that to heart. As I watched him walk away, I felt a mix of sadness and relief. It's the end of a chapter, but maybe the beginning of a new one too. On a personal note, my relationship with Tom has grown stronger through all of this. We've moved in together, and he's been my rock. Alex is still a close friend, and the three of us are working on a new project, a platform designed to connect independent developers with ethical investors and companies. It feels good to be creating something positive out of all this chaos. The Women in Tech group I mentioned has taken off, and I've become more involved in advocacy work. It's been healing to channel my experiences into something positive, helping others navigate the often murky waters of the tech industry. Last month, I gave a talk at a major tech conference about ethics and integrity in the industry. It was terrifying, but also empowering. My career has taken an unexpected turn too. After speaking at several industry events about my experience, I've been offered a position as an ethics consultant for a major tech firm. It's a new challenge, but one I'm excited to take on. Who would have thought that standing up for what's right could lead to this? Looking back on everything that's happened, I'm amazed at how much I've grown. The scared, conflicted sister who wrote that first post seems like a different person now. Yes, I've lost some things along the way, the illusion of a perfect family, certain friendships, but I've gained so much more. Integrity, strength, purpose, and a newfound sense of self. To anyone out there facing a similar ethical dilemma, especially when it involves family, I want to say this, standing up for what's right is never easy, but it's always worth it. The road might be tough, but you'll come out stronger on the other side. As for me, I'm looking forward to the future for the first time in a long while. There's still healing to be done, bridges to rebuild where possible, but I'm ready for whatever comes next. Because now I know that no matter what, I can face it with my head held high, knowing I stayed true to my values.